The St. Lawrence River is one of the largest bodies of water in North America. It connects Montreal and a lot of other parts of the province to the world. Its ecosystems are rich and diverse, its width is breathtaking, and it's one of the continent's largest ports. We don't treat the water how we should treat it. It's referred to as Highway H2O. Gunnawonga means by the rapids. I fished here most of my life. And for years, it was basically a dumping ground. Because of aging infrastructure, municipalities often still have to pour wastewater into the river. In many ways, the St. Lawrence River has been treated as a tool rather than a living ecosystem. And some are asking, have we pushed it too far? Montreal and surrounding cities like Laval and Longueuil have been using the St. Lawrence for waste for centuries. Montreal didn't have a wastewater treatment plan for decades and decades. So all the sewage and the wastewater went straight into the water. And it wasn't until 1996, about two decades after most other Canadian large cities, that Montreal finally got its wastewater treatment plant. The river was considered to be this large river that was going to accept all things that we put into it uh, without complaining. So they started filtering and treating the water before letting it flow back into tributaries. But that infrastructure is already starting to age and it needs repairs. And while repairs happen, untreated wastewater goes right back into the river. Montreal, Longueuil, and Laval have all periodically dumped wastewater in recent years. Notably, Montreal dumped 8 billion litres of wastewater into the river in 2015. It's day one of the big dump. Why the mayor says everything is going swimmingly. What I've been uh, learning, it's not a pretty sight down there, so we had to, we had to do it. It is impacting for the long term. There have been some research in the Lac Saint-Pierre near Trois-Rivières, and they found some, some biological uh, subproducts, pharmaceutical subproducts into the fish over there. And they've seen some genetical uh, effect on fish. So that's the long-term effect. According to the Fondation Rivière, a Quebec-based organization that advocates for river restoration, Longueuil dumped wastewater into the St. Lawrence more than a thousand times in 2020. Montreal more than 1,500 times, and Laval more than 2,000 times. This year, Longueuil said it might have to dump another 300 million litres of wastewater into the river. It says it's necessary to improve the system. On s'apprête à y remplacer les équipements qui, après 30 ans, sont arrivés à leur fin de vie. Dumping wastewater isn't the only way people have fundamentally altered the St. Lawrence River. And Her Majesty the Queen. In the 1950s, the federal government created a $400 million system of canals to bypass rapids called the St. Lawrence Seaway. The seaway ushered in a new era of industrialization. The banks of the river became locks and piers for the exchange of goods from thousands of huge vessels every year and still does. But it also resulted in the flooding and relocation of several communities. And the government expropriated 1,262 acres of land from the small Ganyengahaga, also known as Mohawk, community of Ganawage on the south shore of Montreal. Ganawage didn't only lose its shoreline, though. It also lost some of its ways of life. We call it flat rocks. That's where everybody used to go and when they were... Before, before the seaway, that's where everybody used to go and hang and, and swim. My name is Morgan Gahanduni Phillips. I'm from the community of Ganawage. I lived here all my life. Ganawage means by the rapids. My mother was an educator, Rita Phillips, and she uh, used to tell us about how, like in the, from 1954 to 59, when they built the seaway, before that, they grew up on the river, they played on the river, they washed their clothes on the river, they 
fished in the river and so some of the elders said that even parts of the language was lost because there's certain words that they would use while they're at the river certain ways of fishing for example and yeah so a lot of the elders are it's just a dev devastating devastating loss for us we're totally cut off from the river and now that community is taking back some stewardship of the river the environment office here in Ganawaga is doing some restoration of the bay. Um, there's an island and they've, they've done a lot of work in the past year, year and a half of restoring some of that. Well, even the environment, how it rejuvenates it itself in the wake of a, a, a natural disaster. So there's all these different layers of resilience. And so amongst the indigenous people, the real resilience that um, the fact that we're still here. I think that's the good news story, is this river has an incredible resiliency, but it's still uh, on an edge, and, and we can push it over the edge if we don't take the measures that we need to, to look after this river and to protect the river and to look at the demands that we ask of this river. The River Institute has been working on a project called River Rapport about the art and people whose daily lives are on the St. Lawrence. We can't just talk about it in terms of science. We have to talk about it in terms of society, and in terms of art, in terms of what it means to each other. Yeah, I fished here most of my life, my father before me, my grandfather. What does the St. Lawrence mean for you? This river? Yeah. Well, for me, everything. I believe we should preserve it as much as we can to uh, leave it for the future.